Hello and welcome back to The Note. Well, the New Year's drama continues. According to S&P, we have had the worst start for the S&P 500, the main index of the US stock market, in its history. I don't think that necessarily predicts too much, but it still indicates that people are really not enjoying themselves so far this week. The main reason we are looking at here, we had the very ugly news overnight that the Shanghai Composite Index for the second time this week had fallen more than 7% and had then by circuit breakers been forced to close early. Now, as you can see, the uh, Shanghai Composite is an extremely bubbly index, has little relationship to the uh, Chinese economy, and there were clear technical reasons why this might have happened. The circuit breakers were counterproductive and so on. However, there was a much more important piece of information from China, which we can show you here, which is that there was yet another sharp, by its standards, sharp depreciation of the Chinese yuan against the dollar. You can remember that huge, uh, in context, that huge depreciation we saw back in August created a great scare. Well, what we've seen since then has been exactly equal to the depreciation we saw back in August. Perhaps even more significantly, during that event, there came a point when the, the uh, People's Bank of China intervened late in the day to push the yuan back up against the dollar. This week, we have seen a succession of sharp falls driven by the market, which have not elicited any correcting response from the authorities. So very many people are getting the message whether that's what was intended to be sent is another matter. Many people are getting the message that China has decided to allow its currency to fall. Now, that has led to some ugly events on stock markets. Obviously, emerging markets is in ever greater pain, but you can see also developed markets are now almost below their uh, lows from uh, the summer of last year, and broadly speaking, have pretty much given up everything they've gained over the last two years. Now, let's take a look at the most important collateral effects of this. First of all, here we are with the uh, JP Morgan Emerging Markets Financial um, Foreign Exchange Index. This includes the major emerging market uh, currencies. It excludes, very importantly, it excludes the yuan, and you can see that that has dropped to a new low. Then if you look at the Bloomberg Industrial Metals Index, similarly very sensitive to the strength of the Chinese economy. Now again, during the day, at a new low for this cycle. Now that's important because those appeared to be very important reasons why the Federal Reserve decided not to raise rates back in September. Low metals prices and other low commodity prices imply deflationary pressure uh, and um, falling emerging market foreign exchange implies that there would be even greater dangers to a stronger dollar that would come from raising rates. That's why the Fed passed in September. If that was a reason not to raise in September, the logic would be that there is a stronger reason now not to raise. And therefore, that leads to another very interesting collateral effect of all this. This is derived by Bloomberg from Fed Funds Futures. And what we're seeing here is the probability that uh, the minimum rate for the uh, Fed funds rate as of uh, December of this year is 1% or above. In other words, what are the probabilities that we will get three rate rises this year? Remember, the Fed has said that we should expect four, and we've seen an extremely sharp drop uh, in expectations for Fed rate rises so far this year. The market now thinks there's only just about a 20% chance that we'll see as many as three rate rises this year. There was a disjunction entering the year between what the Fed was telling us and what the market was expecting. That disjunction has widened substantially after this news from China. Now, the week is definitely not over. We have non-farm payroll data to look forward to from the US, always critical information. But at this point, it's probably going to be rather secondary to the news from China. Uh, the circuit breakers have been removed, so there is very great interest in whether this will allow the uh, stock market to fall very much further, 
and there will be an intense interest once again in the currency. Then we can move on to the non-farm payrolls, which perhaps ironically are expected to be very strong. But amid the current psychology, which I suspect is somewhat overdone, but given the current alarm about China, the fear that you really don't know what's going on there and that you have to take what signals the authorities send you, amid this current alarm, even the non-farm payroll report doesn't seem that important.